Blister Summit 2024 with Luke Jacobson for the first time at a summit, which is awesome. And we're going to cover a few skis, a few of the newest skis from Moment, largely because last year we covered just about everything with Max at Moment. So people should check out that video for the full rundown. But today we're talking commanders. So I think to start, can you give people a bit of a background slash history lesson on what the commander series has been and kind of where they fit in the lineup? Yeah, definitely. So the Commander is our directional charger metal laminate ski. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's been around for several years now. Traditionally, it has been a 98 or a 108. We're pretty much more known for twin tip skis, big fat powder skis, but we can definitely appreciate a directional charger. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been uh, several years of trying to really curate and design that metal laminate ski with the right woods to be stable mm -hmm. and feel super connected, but not have a ski that's too directional that you can still take off piece and not just get your ass handed to you mm -hmm. sort of thing. Um, so, you know, that ski has been around for a long time and it's been good um, in the 98 and the 108. And uh, for us, which was kind of wild is the 98 was always a better seller for us. And that makes sense for a major European manufacturer, mm -hmm. but like, we're known for wider stuff and mm -hmm. Tahoe, everybody kind of goes oversized. Um, so it was kind of surprising to see that and talking to the customers and figure out what they wanted. Mm -hmm. You know, and people are like, oh my gosh, Moment made something under a hundred underfoot. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, last year we came out with the Countach at 110 and that ski is awesome. And we love that old Commander series at you know, the 98 and the 108, but the Countach just did such a better job mm -hmm. uh, as a free ride directional platform mm -hmm. than the uh, Commander 108 is just so much more versatile. So we took a hard look at that Commander line that we spent so much time on and realized that, you know, we wanted to make some narrower offerings. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of those people that were getting on the classic 98, kind of like the more free ride folks wanted like the sub 100s, like people get hung up on numbers, you know? Yep. So <laughs> they don't really want to go below that. You know, to some people that's like a nerd ski or something <laughs> like that. So that's why we made the 102. And then we went down to the 92 mm -hmm. to make a true ski that can, you know, really carve. Um, but in doing so, we changed up the ski quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, it has way more effective edge. It has um, three radii. Mm -hmm. um, the camber rocker profile is a little bit different, it has a lot more mass in the ski. Mm -hmm. So it's super damp, super connected. Um, and yeah, I mean, we historically haven't made a lot of like more, I wouldn't call it a carving ski, but ski mm -hmm. with so much side cut yeah, under yeah. 100. So we actually put more design time, development, and prototypes into the new Commander series than any other ski we've made before, mm -hmm. just because we were so nitpicky about it and didn't have the track record and experience. But yeah, we're pretty excited about how the new ones came out. Yeah, I think the as soon as we got the skis in hand for our reviews, I mean, what you say now makes sense. They are very different than anything we had tested. The long effective edge was pretty obvious. The of this moment skis I've tried, probably my favorite for carving. Like definitely not a carving specific series, but I had a blast carving those skis. And yeah, they I think they have kind of a more distinct place in the lineup now. Um, and I'm excited to talk to, it sounds like a lot of attendees have been testing them. I've seen a lot of folks on them this week and uh, we're excited to spend more time on them. But I think for, for the folks who are interested in the details, can you run us through some of the nitty gritty stuff in terms of what's the core made out of, maybe how it compares to the previous commanders um, and also within the current lineup, like the Countach we talked about last year. For people who aren't super familiar with that ski, maybe go over that comparison as well. Yeah, so as far as materials go in the ski, um, the commanders have been getting heavier and heavier. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and some of the materials have changed over the years, but really to get a super planted feel in the ski, it's a poplar and European beach mm -hmm. uh, wood core. And uh, we actually bring the beach in from Europe. It's mm -hmm. not like a US grown species. We tried so many uh, different types of wood just to get that super connected feel to the snow. And mm -hmm. it's like beach is kind of like the magic sauce inside the ski to do that. 
Um, and then there is multiple layers of tetanol in the ski above and below the core. You know, the ski does have a semi-cap, but underfoot it goes to vertical sidewall mm -hmm. um, under the binding mount area with full width tetanol. Gotcha. Um, so it also has, uh, you know, a tri triax fiberglass weave mm -hmm. with carbon fiber stringers mm -hmm. above and below the core. So it's a very stout ski. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we added, you know, there's also different binding retention layers along with the metal that change the flex of the ski underfoot that add mass. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a big thing that we really needed to do for a more piece specific ski to keep it really composed. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you were mentioning the side cut and, you know, it's not a carver, but it's probably our best carving ski for mm -hmm. piece skiing. And that was really uh, fun to play around with, like in almost 50 different prototypes, is the variations of the three ra three primary radii in the mm -hmm. side cut and how that works. Um, and then how far we like to bring the widest point of the side cut into the tip of the rocker and not have it be a very tapered ski. Mm -hmm. um, like some of the other skis on the market there, just when you roll it over, you have more edge working for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think one thing that stood out right away substantial feels like a good word for these skis like you pick them up and then especially once you ski on them yeah substantial and solid is how i would describe them but there is a they can produce a lot of energy too which i was surprised by like when you really put in the effort to bend them you can get like launched out of turns which yeah. is really fun as well yeah i mean that's a combination of the camber and the side cut but you know, it's still, I think, to other skis uh, on the market that would be competitive with this, uh, I think those skis have a tighter radius to them. Mm -hmm. So we still like the ability to have a long turn. Mm -hmm. And I, we don't like skis that are too hooky or want to climb uphill. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't want to be pigeonholed into like one or two radiuses really well. So mm -hmm. that's what we really tried to do with the, the side cut of the ski is to have it be adaptable mm -hmm. but quick. Um, we do actually put a... Um, out of the factory, just the tune on it, we do put a more aggressive mm -hmm. edge on it, a lower base edge angle, so it hooks up and goes. Mm -hmm. You can't really do that on a wide ski or else people think it's way too hooky. Yeah. So, you know, we, we definitely, with the new machinery at the factory, we put like a little bit more of a, a race tune out of the bag on mm -hmm. it, you know, as for, for, for a factory tune. Yeah, so obviously you mentioned 102 and 92 this year. Within that lineup, kind of what sort of terrain conditions, types of skiers are you thinking about for those two different models? Yeah, I mean, the 92 is definitely going to be our most piece-specific model mm -hmm. that we make. Um, you know, that being said, with the camber rocker profile, this, you know, it has tip rocker, but, you know, the tail comes up, but I like to call it tail rise because it's not mm -hmm. really rocker. Um, that's one thing we wanted to do, you know, like when we're skiing around, we're not folks that just stick right to the hard pack. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to be able to take it off trail. Um, so that's what the tail rise is about. That The run on the tail rise is a little bit longer, actually, than previous iterations mm -hmm. of the Commander. Um, but, you know, it is a minus 10 mount, so it's mm -hmm. not going to be as nimble as, you know, our freestyle skis mm -hmm. and things like that in tight spots. Uh, the 102 is substantially burlier. Yeah. Um, and that kind of um, came about, you know, at the factory when we first start testing skis, we like to get a solid baseline before sending them out to all the different athletes across the world and different testers and mm -hmm. kind of, they just stick around with the local Tahoe crew first. Mm -hmm. And most of us are pretty tall guys, mm -hmm. but we definitely want to eventually expand the size run of the commanders to be okay. a unisex ski. So in doing so, when we prototyped the commander series, we started with the 82, which was a little bit unique for the brand. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, uh, the 82 got like, the 102, 182 got pretty burly uh -huh. <laughs> just because, yeah. like, because of that. So the 88 is just like, it's pretty insane. It's yeah. a truck. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, definitely like the guys that are doing the comps and the free ride roll tour stuff, they're like loving that ski. Mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely the 102 can, can definitely still rail a turn, but like definitely a little bit more off trail, crud buster, blasting mm -hmm. through stuff. I mean, to me, if I'm going in tight spots, I would still have prefer a ski that is a little bit more progressively mounted, mm -hmm. but you can still take these out there. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a little bit more work, but definitely for, for a skier that knows where the front of their boot is. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And then I assume for the people who are looking for a bit more maneuverability, quicker ski that can handle maybe like softer conditions, is that when you're, you'll start pushing them towards the Countach? Yeah. 
uh, you know, when a ski is super stiff with metal, like as things get soft, like it can work if the shovel's wide enough, mm -hmm. but you know, you just want a little bit more flex, you know, you want that ski to banana and mm -hmm. rocker a bit more, even if the ski doesn't, isn't rockered, you know, in mm -hmm. soft snow, you're going to have a better time. And that's what the, the Countach does, you know, it still uses the, the woods and a lot of the construction ideas of a directional charger, mm -hmm. but we took the metal out and then we moved the mount forward mm -hmm. to minus eight versus minus 10. Gotcha. Um, and then more dramatic, there's still a flatter tail rise, but more, you know, more rise in the tip and tail of the mm -hmm. ski to make it more playful in the softer stuff. Gotcha. Well, thank you very much for joining us at the summit, having attendees test the new commanders and the rest of the lineup. I know all of our reviewers are psyched to continue to ski them. I know the when we posted the first looks of each of them, they probably got more comments than anything else we've posted recently. So there's a lot of excitement, and now we know the full story. So appreciate the time, and uh, maybe we can actually ski together at some point this week. Yeah, yeah, we got some snow in the forecast. Let's yeah. do it. Sweet.